I'm going to tell you the story about how I met someone remarkable. We would like to welcome you to Savannah. The temperature on the ground is 70 degrees and the local time is... i just flown in for a job interview. I'd already prepaid for my compact car when the rental place had a water main break. I'm sorry, sir. We're going to have to cancel your reservation. The car rental lot had flooded. I didn't have time for this. I was already running a little late and was trying to remember my answers to all the pre-interview questions I'd practiced. So I had them drop me off at the closest place. Excuse me. And then suddenly, I was standing in front of her. Okay, choosing Savannah car rentals. How can I help? I can't remember which one of us smiled first. Hi. 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 Uh, I just wanted to get a car. Okay. July 10th. I'm May 10th. What are the chances? Actually, the chances are 1 in 30, but that didn't matter. We both could feel something happening. Cool. And so, by the end of my first four hours in Savannah, I had a job. And more importantly, I had a date. A little less than a year later, we were married. And to think, it all happened because some guy working for Savannah Water got to regulate the pressure. <laughs> and then every time I think we should remodel. I speak up and say we have to go to Paris. Great, then let's go to Paris. And then I wake up the next morning and say we have to remodel. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we've been trying to decide if we uh, want to put a new pool in the backyard or take that trip to Cabo. Oh. And I'm very glad that we decided that we're going to do the pool. Honey, I, I thought we decided on Cabo. Yes, right. No, we're going to Cabo. We are going to Cabo. Brain fart. Wow. <laughs> that must be Katie and Chuck. Here are the wines. She's white, he's red. Hi! Hi. Are you okay? Where's Chuck? I mean, that's why all these jobs are moving to Florida and Texas. There's no state income tax. You know, part of me's always kind of wanted to live in Texas. What all those tornadoes? It's so dangerous. Well, that, that about Florida. You know, Florida's great. It's right next door. Well, they have a lot of hurricanes. So. And, and not to mention the humidity. It's it's. We were supposed to go to Florida this summer. Is this who's getting married? We have the plane tickets already in the hotel, and my... My... <laughs> bridesmaid's dress. And he even said it was gonna be like our second honeymoon. But then he screwed a girl he met online. <clears throat> Katie? Would you like to lie down? Or, uh... Guys, I'm fine. I'm gonna be a divorce wedding planner. That's great. More Syrah, anyone? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Jam might have some Xanax. Oh, Steve and Sabrina just liked our photo. Mm. They just said, where's their invite? I've always liked them. Yeah, they're nice. We haven't seen them in a while. We should invite them to the next barbecue. Maybe we could have a cookout competition. I mean, he's always bragging about his brisket. That's not that good. No, it's too dry. No way. What? Uh, Chuck just changed his status to single. He did? Yeah. Well, that is disgusting. You should unfriend him. No, oh, okay. I mean, it's up to you. 
Only do it if it's what you really want. Right, eh? No, 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 prove me wrong. We got an extra ticket for the game tonight. And he thinks if we offer it to you, you won't go. He thinks you will. It, it's the first three rounds on the winner. God, guys, I, I can't. Oh, there it is. I, I would love Victory. It, I can't. Tonight, I've you got plans. Susan, and... steak tips, game shows waiting on <laughs> That was last night, actually. No, no, tonight's remodeling shows. Susan and I are redoing the new bathroom, and she'd oh. kill me if I missed it. But. <laughs> I'll go with you guys next time. You realize you tell us that every single week, right? Look, it's cool. Just tell us you'd rather go home and hang with your wife. We'll stop asking. No, it's just, if I start going out on guys' nights, then she'll start going out on girls' nights. And then, before you know it, I'm only going to see her on the weekends. And that's wrong because? Weekends are for projects. Projects? Yeah. Mowing the lawn, painting the trim, building a new deck. Look, Susan and I made a commitment to make our commitment work. And you know what that takes? Masochistic guilt? No, no, it takes commitment. When you guys find the right relationship, you, you love that commitment. No, man, you're right. You're right. I mean, we're just going to go to the game. Yeah. We're going to get hammered. Mm. We're going to probably embarrass ourselves yeah. in front of some co-eds. Oh. But you, you'd rather go home to your wife. That's amazing. Yeah. Seriously, man, you're kind of lucky. I tell myself that every day. That is a great idea for a backsplash. What do you think? I don't know. What do you think? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Love you. Love you, too. Well, we want to do the infinity pool. Mm -hmm. It looks amazing, but... Roger glasses. He's recently. Hi. Hi. Hello. I can't eat it. I I thought you'd love uh, cheesecake. I do, but I made a deal with Deborah. She stops using her passive aggressive manipulation to make me go visit her mother, and I lose ten pounds. Oh. Well, <laughs> commitment takes compromise. No. Takes ignorance. What's this? Some event the city's hosting. They were looking for a design for the new concert hall. Oh, cool. Are you going? Oh, Christ, I wish. But I've got Deborah's third annual organic guacamole competition that she hosts every year with her sisters. Oh, that sounds fun. Yes, if you don't have a dick. You should go to that, though. Free food, free booze, and uh, who knows? You might even get uh, inspired to design something. <laughs> right. Uh, it, it's the wife. Oh. Time to compromise. Hey. Hey, I, uh, I left some frosting off the list this morning, so can you pick some up? Then I'll three next to the flower. Uh, yeah, but frosting for what? Well, I told Dan and Jan that we would bring a cake on Friday. Nate? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, um, do we really want to go to that? I mean, it's just to celebrate the first day of construction on the new pool. Oh, well, what else would we do? 
Well, uh, I was thinking the city's hosting this event to uh, find architects to design the new concert hall. And I don't know, I thought it sounded like it could be fun. S Susan? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, we could go, but last time we went to one of those things, you were bored out of your mind and you made me promise that we would never go again. <laughs> Besides, we already told Dan and Jan we would be there. You know what? It was unbearable. Intolerable. But it's up to you. Only do it if it's what you really want. Hello? Susan? What's wrong? It just hit me, okay? This 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 wave of emotion, this this feeling and and I don't know how to describe it, but every part of me realized that every part of me is just unhappy. Miserable. Miserable? Miserable? How's that even possible? I mean, one minute. I'm on the phone and we're debating like what to do Friday night and then the next you tell me that you're miserable? I mean, how, how the fuck is that even possible? It just is, okay? No, no, listen to me. Let's talk about this. What can we do? What, what can I do to fix this? I wish I knew. I really think I just needed to put this all in perspective. I mean, what marriage didn't have a little bump in the road? I healed a client. I figured that when our friends heard about this Friday night, they'd cut the cake and toast to Nate's night out. Good morning. <gasps> I, I just thought we could talk. I, I brought us some coffee. Okay, but don't just barge in on me when I'm naked. What are you talking about? I've seen you naked a thousand times. I don't get what the big deal is. Look, we're having some issues, and, and I don't want to complicate things. I don't have any issues. You said you were unhappy. I'm not unhappy. I love our life, our marriage, getting to sleep in my own bed. I know. I feel different, okay? Different? Better. What do you mean, better? What do you think I mean? Do you want me to lie to you? Maybe. But the fourth wife, she was a real looker. We both got our money's worth on that one. So do you think you uh, could ever get married again? Nah, no, 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 no. I don't think so. I'm, uh, I'm so unlucky. If it were raining pussies, the one that would land on my head would have a dick already in it. All right, uh, moving on. Ed, how about you? Any uh, movement with your action items this week? Yes, I finally got rid of that hyphen at the end of my name. So I'm no longer Ed Smith Myers. I'm just Ed Smith. Congratulations, Ed. You're making real progress. I'm proud of you. So, Nate, how about you? Would you like to share with the group? Uh, <clears throat> Hi, um, I'm Nate. Um, I, I just, I just came to check this out because um, American Voice is finished for the season, so. I had a little bit of extra time this week. But I don't, I don't really know what I'm, what I'm doing here.
I know. I got really lucky. I was able to get an earlier flight. It means we can definitely make it to uh, Peter and Penny's potluck. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll pick up the bottle of Syrah. You look like the expert. Are the waffles here any good? Are the waffles here any good? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're okay. I had better. My wife actually makes really good waffles. Whole grain, soy milk, egg whites. And we only use grade A maple syrup, medium amber, and a little maple leaf bottle from Vermont. You know, Susan has this way of pouring the maple syrup into every other square. So there's never too much, but never too little. I mean, she would even take the butter out of the fridge an hour before we ate, so it softens, and then when it hits the top of the waffle, it just melts in every direction. I bet you can't wait to get home. How's it going? It's, it, like, it's been a while. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? We cannot decide. <laughs> Nate, what a surprise. Yeah, it is a surprise, isn't it? We're having a dinner party with all our friends as if nothing even happened. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm, I'm really good. Thanks for asking. I'm, I'm getting along just swell. Really glad that you're making good use of our time apart. The space that you wanted so bad is treating you well, and that, hey, <laughs> it's just shits and giggles here at Nate's expense, like isn't that, it? Let's just go upstairs and talk. Holy and shit! Is that the new 65 inch 4K HD TV with crystal clear pixelation, the one that I wanted to get instead of redoing the bathroom? Okay, the rock and ribs are ready to be tasted. Who wants some more Kino? Oh. How's it going? I'm, uh, I'm Nick. Good to meet you. What's your name? My name is Nate Brown. Nate Brown. It's on the mail that comes here. It's on the cable bill. Hey, can we please just talk about this? You know what? It's, it's, it's really not the fact that you're screwing my wife that bothers me, because honestly, that, that I could get over. But Susan, if you're gonna let this guy wear my Kiss the Cook apron, use my tripless basting brush, and cook my 44-inch Cabo grill, then, then, <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're nothing but a filthy whore. I'm just having a really hard time adjusting to everything right now. Hard how? Well, I, I just feel like my whole life is turned upside down, right? And I, I don't know where to start, you know? I'm, I'm also dealing with some pretty big issues at the moment, like not being allowed back into my own house that I bought and paid for. But then there's also like the, the little things that bother me even more than being homeless. Like I passed our Thai food place the other night and we loved Thai food. It was our favorite. And every time we'd go, I would get the chicken skewers and she would get the garlic beef and then we'd share. And it's like, what, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? I mean, I, I can't get both. Hey, it's just gonna take some time. How long have you been coming here? 15 years. I would have gone to Paris. No. Three models. You know. Nate? Nate Brown. It's Katie. Katie Franco. Used to be Hamilton. Oh, Katie. Katie. Hi. What the hell happened to you? I'll take that as a compliment. And you look like you always did. Really? Because half of me is divorcing the other half. Oh. You too? Mm hmm. So, uh, what are you up to now? Are you still uh, helping the betrothed march to their emotional death? God, no. Really? That, that was your life. You lived for it. No. I had what could be innocently described as a complete fucking meltdown where I lost my cool on a customer. 
to the point where they called off the engagement. Probably good you quit. Are you kidding? It was like the best day of my life. I suddenly felt empowered and inspired and it allowed me to shed the past and take hold of my own life. I thought from that moment on of my breakup as my wake up, as a moment in my life when I said, I am my own person. I'm not just half of Katie and Chuck, I'm Katie Franco. And the fun of the single thing is starting over. Don't commiserate, celebrate. What is there to celebrate? You, your newfound freedom, your independence, the new life you're about to embark on. Celebrate being single. My, my marriage was everything to me. Operative word was. You gotta start living in the now. Fuck the past. Fuck the past? Seize your future. Carpe diem? Messi. You guys planned a wedding, right? That was just one big party. Why don't you throw another one? Well, I guess I could try. I just don't know if I could pull it off. Seems like a lot to celebrate just moi. Who else would you rather celebrate? Well, listen. Call me if you need me. I'm back to being an accountant. Taxes after a divorce can be a bit tricky. Honestly surprised he came up with it himself. <laughs> <laughs> really? You think? If, if that was my ex-husband, I, I would sabotage the party and make a complete ass out of him in front of all of his loser friends. Hypothetically speaking, you know. <laughs> Jan loves her little hypothetical. No, I just uh, throwing a party is hard. It's tough. It's not just buying a six-pack and serving some onion dip. It's a lot more, you know, I, I always planned who was coming and what we would serve and where they would sit, you know. I always made him feel like he was involved. Yeah, he always had those amazing syrupy, sweet, and spicy ribs. <laughs> yeah. Seriously? It was seriously not syrupy? Oh, I misspoke. And if I hadn't added white pepper to the rub, it would have been bland. And if I didn't constantly baste the ribs, it would have burned. If I didn't serve Merlot, he would have served Chardonnay, so mm. Mm, that would not have gone. Can't do that. After the term alimony, permanent alimony. Her pension contribution entitlement, her car insurance, her health care coverage. I see 17% of my salary. One, seven. No wonder I feel 83% like shit. The irony? Before our first date, I dreamed of fucking her. And now she's fucking me. Right up the ass. Okay, uh, anyone else have an, anything they'd like to add? I have something. Um, I was actually trying to think about this divorce thing in a whole new way. So instead of feeling like shit about it, I decided why not have a party? Um, uh, I, I, I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry, why not have a, a what? A divorce party. Nate, I, I think that might be misdirecting some of the pain that you were feeling. Yeah, why would you want to do that? I mean, you could think about it any way you want, but you still be broadcasting your failure to the world. We come in here to share our lives with each other. We keep it in this room. 
You want to share your misery with the world? Fine. But for me, I'd, I'd rather be safe in here than deal with what's going on out there. I need to understand how I, a guy that I think is pretty normal, not offensive, only rarely loses his temper in public, only has one guest attending his party. What party? The divorce party. The one that you RSVP to? Oh, yeah, here it is. Well, first of all, I RSVP yes to every invite. It doesn't mean I'm going. It means that you think I'm going. So for the next week, if I see you at spin class, you don't think I'm lame for saying no. Then, about an hour before the party starts, I send you an email with something along the lines of, oh my God, I'm so sorry I can't make it, but do a shot for me, love you, Katie. So you weren't coming either? No, of course not. Okay. Listen, Nate, I don't know what to tell you. You decided to throw a party, and now you're realizing that without your marriage, no one feels obligated to show up just for you. Why not? Because you used to be half of something, and now you're all of nothing. Do you think that's kind of your fault? Oh, my fault? Yeah. I mean, you gave me the whole don't commiserate, celebrate speech. Nate, please, look at your invite. Chips and dip at the Savannah Inn Express isn't a party, it's pathetic. I, I got the double deluxe suite. Nate, if you want to have a successful divorce party, you got to treat this as if... As if what? As if it was as important as your wedding. <laughs> okay, <laughs> look, if I had 30 grand to spend, I'd throw something cool, but I, I don't have that kind of money. Are you telling me your new life is only worth a bag of tortilla chips and a jar of salsa? Because that's what I'm hearing. Okay, think about it. If you were getting married somehow, you and your overeager bride would find the money to flaunt your new life together, right? Why don't you throw it for me? What? I mean, you love doing that. You, you, you live for it. No. What I lived for was a feeling, you know? The rush of making a memory that could maybe carry someone through a lifetime. Like, I was creating a piece of art. And I was the artist. That was the past. Your specialty was sending people off into the world with the memory of the best day of their lives. Help me have a new best day of my life. Make me a work of art. Please. Okay. If you can find the money to pay my full fee and allow me to plan something with the bells and whistles that keeps my former reputation intact, then I'll do it. Okay. I, I need my I need my tennis shoes. Your tennis shoes. Yeah, I, I looked in the closet and on the shoe rack and I. I just... Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, d right, right behind my uh, ab roller. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Ah, yeah. Little guy, huh? He's uh, he, uh, size uh, eight and a half, right? Uh, not nine and a half. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. 
okay. There I was, standing in front of my soon-to-be ex and her buck-naked boyfriend. And it was clear. The ring meant absolutely nothing to her. It was like she was void of that gush of emotion that she had when I proposed. I, mean, I, I spent weeks, months even, researching the stupid four C's. Cut, color, clarity, and carrot. I organized a flash mob for the perfect proposal. I even hired dancers to present the ring. I mean, the fucking absurdity of this invented tradition where men have to bust their ass and spend three months' salary just to express their undying devotion? I mean, when the hell did that start? When men were stupid enough to fall for it. I don't know, maybe I should just give it back. Well, the courts look at an engagement ring as a promise of marriage, and if the bride fulfills that promise, and your ex certainly did, it's supposedly hers, free and clear. You think I should return it? Hell no. It's a bullshit law. Hot that ring and you get as much money for it as you can. Fuck her. This is the bridal bible. All my girls used to get one. It's the how-to for the I do. Even if we're celebrating the death of your marriage. Since you've been lost in the delusional fairy tale of marriage, how about something truly romantic? Maybe even a mass party where we reveal the new Nate Brown. Hmm? What do you think? I don't know. How about this? You've got a sweeping view of the water. What's not to love? And we could even do maybe like a little spiritual cleansing in the room. Hmm? I don't know. I thought this could be the perfect place to be loud and proud about your new life. What do you think? Maybe. What about something exotic like Indian food? We don't like Indian. What do you mean, we? I, I mean me. I was bitching. Yeah, and if I serve that, everyone's gonna think I'm a huge bitch. Hmm, no, maybe it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's kish. It's cringeworthy. I don't want people to think that I have all of this pent up emotions, this bitter pill that I'm forcing them to swallow. Mm -hmm. This looks like a Halloween cake. Yeah. Besides, no one even likes white icing, do they? I mean, it's just a cake. I set the seating at 100. We can always adjust up if we need to, or down for that matter. I don't understand why we're working on a seating chart when I don't have any guests yet. That's exactly my point. And it's valid, but I don't have anyone to invite. All of my so-called friends were just bodies that would come over two by two for bland wine and safe conversation. Trust me, I remember that. Your revolving list of couple friend guests. Listen, it doesn't matter because I'm pretty sure those people are gonna go to Susan's party anyways. Of course she's having a party. She lives for those things. Exactly. So why don't you let her live her life while you go define yours? Go find some people you actually want to be around. 39 trees, 39. It's gonna have greenery. Hey, guys. Hey, man. Just wanted to see what you guys were up to this weekend. See if you wanted to uh, down some brewskis or tea some tail or something. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tea some tail? Yeah, you know, go go out and just uh everything uh okay? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. I'm fine. I well better than fine. You don't have to lie. I'm not lie about what? A guy's wife who's in my fantasy league who also takes yoga with Jen, who apparently attends your dinner parties, told us that Susan kicked you out. Why weren't we invited to those dinner parties? We're just we're working through some issues. She's divorcing you. That is one of the issues. Look, those dinner parties were boring. I was bored. You guys would have been bored. All right, look. We see through your little charade here. Clearly, everything is in Hunky Dory and Brown Manor. And now that there's no Susan, I'd say you're a little desperate to hang out with us. 
desperate. I'm not desperate. I mean, we're going to that thing this weekend. All right, let, no. here's the deal, dude. No, not in this condition. What condition? You're like a caged man in the zoo of life, a sad little panda cub that's been protected behind bars, suckling milk from your mother's tits. And now you don't have a mommy anymore. Trust us, this is for your own safety. If we put you into the wild, you'd be killed. I can survive in the wild, okay? I can be a tiger. I can kill. Hey, what's up, baby? You're looking good. Hey. Yo. <sighs> all right. Just be cool, all right? Bingo. Good to be out, you know, on my own, solo, kicking it, <laughs> not having to worry about what time I get home tonight so I can make some stupid brunch plans in the morning. <laughs> Do you know what that's like? I mean, dude, I spent so much time worrying about Susan this and Susan that, and trying to keep her happy for her to turn around one day and tell me that she's unhappy. Like, what the fuck is up with that? It's okay, at least I'm not one of those guys that has to talk about all the time, you know? All right, baby, your turn to drink. Let's go, okay? Chug, 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 What's up, motherfucker? <sighs> hey, dude. All kidding aside, you're a really awesome guy, man. Yeah. I love you, buddy. Hey, we should hang out sometime. What do you put in your hair, too? Hey, how do you get it to... What do you mean? I don't mean that in a gay way. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to pick you up or take you like a, like a homo bar or something. All right. So if you were, you know, trying to pick me up, would that be a bad thing? No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> You're a really good-looking guy, but I'm not gay. <laughs> you know, mm. I feel bad for the gays though. Oh, yeah? Adopting children and marriage equality and like. Fuck marriage, man. It's bad enough being married to the opposite sex. <laughs> Why the fuck would you want to be married to the same sex? You know what I mean? Sorry. Hey. Hey, guys, do you, do you guys want a drink? Fuck no, I don't want a drink. Why would you hate on Chad? Yeah, what but what are you thinking? What do you mean? Oh, dude, come on, we're cool. Hey, Chad! Shh, shh. Chad, do you want a drink? Watch, watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Listen, Listen, I don't know who you think you are, but I think I speak for everyone here when I tell you that it's time for you to go home. I think you're in serious need of inspiration. I think you need a date. A date? Yes, not a girlfriend, not a wife, not someone to help you plan everything. Just someone who might actually enjoy your company during your divorce party. A date. At least I'll have one person coming. Exactly. Maybe a little momentum will help figure everything else out. Where do you want me to find somebody? Now, I don't know if you know, but I'm not the best at socializing.
is strange, really. I mean, if the flood hadn't delayed my flight, I wouldn't have been bored sitting there on my laptop looking at dating sites. <laughs> I mean, what are the chances? T to tell me more about yourself. Well, I've always wanted to go to Ireland. It just, it looks so pristine online, uh, which isn't to say that I feel the need to go jet setting across the world all the time or anything like that. I have this really great couch at home. It's white, shabby chic, so comfortable for watching TV. But it's just too big. Too big? Yeah, I mean, whether it's on the couch or the beach or even on the moon, it's just not the same unless someone's there by your side watching remodeling shows with you. Do you like your job? It's a job. That's all it is, really. I know I shouldn't feel that way about my career, but I don't care. I told them I don't want to go into management because I need time to live, to nurture the relationships in my life, to find someone. I want to bury it at the party. You want to get some uh, flowers and a tombstone for it also? I'm serious, Nick. I want to do this. I, I need to do this. I think it's going to be really therapeutic, you know? It will help me just get rid of the ring for good. One mm -hmm. final symbolic gesture. Say so, babe. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Makes sense to you. Makes sense to me. Great. You've got to be kidding me. What are you doing? You're living the best day of my life. Nate, the whole idea is to make your divorce party your new best day. Well, I don't want a new best day. I just want to lie here until they find my corpse fused to the comfort. What? What do you want? I hate to tell you, but your bridal Bible planning guide sucks. Finding a date was meant to help me get over Susan. But every girl felt like some kind of version of Susan, except they weren't Susan. Now I can't stop thinking about it. Susan? Jesus Christ. Enough with your whole misery routine. It's tiring. Then why was everyone so much like her? Because of this? How did you get that? I hacked into your account. How do you know my password? It's Susan and the year you were married. <sighs> you said, willing to adjust your life goals for the right person. You prefer someone adverse to breaking up after a year and are interested in exploring the interests and hobbies of your next partner? So what? What's wrong with that? If someone really likes cycling, there's no problem with me taking time out of my day to do that with them. If they want to go on a cruise ship to Mexico, then sure, why not? Something to do. Do you even like cycling or cruising? That's not the point. It shows that I'm willing to meet them in the middle. Oh. Is that where you want to live your life? In the middle? Called compromise. No, it's called sacrifice. Giving up who you are to be someone you're not. Sometimes that's what it takes. That's why Susan and I worked so well for all those years. How's it working for you now? Okay, throw it in. I don't want to. Do it. No. Nate? Listen, I know how this feels. Well, you don't. I'm not as strong as you think I am. I thought you got rid of every picture of you and Chuck. Believe me, I know this is hard. I know it better than anyone else. Because you're not just letting go of the past, but you have to let go of the future, too. The future? <laughs> the memories you've dreamed of that you'll never share, and the kids you won't know, and the Christmases you won't celebrate, and growing all together. You have to say goodbye to all of it. Even if you know it was probably your fault. 
You don't blame Chuck? You know when people say it's not you, it's me, and they're completely lying? Well, it actually was me. In trying to make our relationship perfect, I completely suffocated him. Come on, Nate, you can do this. Start over. your wedding picture. And your honeymoon picture. <laughs> and the picture you keep in your wallet behind your license next to the spare key that opens the house that used to be yours. How did you... You're like an addict. I had to search everything. Okay, now light it. As the memories of my past burned away, I couldn't help but wonder why they'd been so damn important to me. She was right all along. Carpe diem. The future holds the memories of tomorrow. Experience every single one. So my whole plan for tonight is that you're no longer Nate. Who am I? You're gonna choose an alter ego and role play. Trust me, this works. I use it whenever my brides were really nervous about their wedding. It breaks you out of that shell and gives you that confidence. That frankly, you have none of and desperately need. So who do you think I should be? Whoever you wanna be, it doesn't matter. But no matter who you choose to be, you have to, and I mean have to follow my two rules. Okay. You cannot break character and you cannot talk about Susan. Susan who? How are we getting into this thing? Didn't I tell you? I RSVP to everything. Homage. Oh, Interesting. What do you think? It's, um, it's quite clever. I took several courses at the Ecole des Beaux-Arts, uh, modernism, postmodernism, the avant-garde. <laughs> How progressive. <laughs> well, well, you should know the tales of the life I've lived. Excuse me. Where in France are you from? We're going to Cannes next year. Really? I thought we had settled on Copenhagen. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, from Normandy. Normandy. We, oui. uh, yes. Uh, have you uh, this this painting here? Uh, <clears throat> no, I haven't. You see, on, on the surface, it, Adam and Eve in a disrupted Eden as a familiar topic. But if you if you look at it, there is no depth, no soul, no character. It is nothing more than shock art. Wow. Mm. 
Very insightful. What do you think of this painting? This one. This, uh, this is, I'm, what? I, I'm speechless. It's, it's brilliant. Well, you should tell the artist. It's right behind you. Excuse me. This lovely Frenchman was just admiring the depth of your work. Uh, yes, your, your, your painting. Yes. I know you from somewhere. No, no, I, I don't think we've ever met. It is you. You're the guy from the party. Uh, no. <laughs> what, 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 are you, what are you putting on some kind of accent? No, you're, you're, you're mistaken. I, um, my name is, is Pierre, mm. Pierre Lemieux. I... No, I remember your drunken ass. I remember the whole night. So what, you, uh, you made fun of me in your native tongue and then you thought, hey, I'm gonna track this guy down, put on some phony ass French accent, wanna fuck with me again? Cause I remember you droning on and on and on about your ex-wife, right? Stacy, how Stacy broke up with you, how, how Stacy won't return your calls, and how you're worried that Stacy's gonna find some other cock and she's gonna it's be back. Susan, okay? Her name is Susan. Susan, Sarah, Steve, who cares, huh? And then you mock me for being gay. Uh, what the fuck is that? Maybe we should go. What, are you gonna give me shit about my work now, too? Is that it? No, no. You're right about me. I know. I am stuck in my head about my relationship and the whole fucking thing. And the other night, I, I was a mess. I barely even remember what happened. But screw all that. Tonight's about you. It's about appreciating your work. It's impressive. I, I I really like this man. The, the texture, the weight of it, the simplicity. It's it's moving. You should be really proud. I mean, you're you're an incredible artist. I, I'm I'm sorry for bothering you. Okay, what do you think? Does it look like I'm going to a funeral? Should I add like a, a pop of color, something more casual? Nick, I need your help, okay? Is this stunning or stupid? I still have time to take it back. Mm, it's black, right? So can I go along with the uh, whole thing? Okay, even if that's the case, could you just indulge me, please? Is this costume or couture? Uh. Isn't bad luck for me to see you in the dress? Nick, that's a wedding. Well, this whole thing sort of feels like a wedding. What? Well, babe, you got, you're having a, a ring ceremony, you know, a cake, you're trying on a dress. I mean, next thing I know, you're gonna be asking me to take you on some post-divorce honeymoon, you know? Well, you know what? After all of this, it would be nice to have a little getaway. I was kind of surprised when you said that you wanted to meet for a drink. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because I have to do something that I really hate. What do you mean? I gotta give someone else credit. The other night when you walked into my show, um, you really helped. Really? Yeah. I, I thought I ruined everything. Oh, I... no, 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 not, not at all. You, <laughs> you, um... You broke me out of my misery. You know, so here I was bitter because I wasn't in a relationship, you know? And then you spot my work and speaks to you, truly speaks to you. And you shared that passion and it just became infectious. I, I meant what I said. Yeah, well, um, because of that, I, uh, I, I sold my first painting. You did? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, good for you. Thanks. I know, it just made me think, man. You know, who cares? My ex broke up with me, right? It was the first time in, uh, 
in a long time. I felt like something more than his boyfriend. Sorry, sorry we're late. Jake didn't know his ass from his hand. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought we told you no crashing. What are you doing here? What'd you overhear no, us in the I, No, relax, relax. I invited you. You did? Yeah. He's getting first round. Right, Nate? <laughs> Yeah, play our cards right. We close the bar down. Damn straight. I'm gonna let my sorrows drown. Anybody need to call home to get a hall pass? Uh, nope. Uh, I'm newly single, so uh, nobody's watching my ass. Yeah. My wife loves when I go out so she can work on her novel. <laughs> really? You don't have to go home and grovel? <laughs> yeah. I haven't had this much fun since I don't know when. <laughs> Keep hanging with us, you'll find your zen. Hey, I need one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. <laughs> what about a Chardonnay from a stellar year? Yeah. I know before hanging with you guys, I was a pathetic dude. <laughs> But thanks to your help, I I'm feeling renewed. <laughs> well, congratulations, and welcome to your new life. You should come help me get over my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a party with no remorse. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I'm sending out invites <laughs> to celebrate my divorce. Yeah! Yeah! Chapter 7 in the Bridal Bible. Squeezing sublimely into the wedding dress. We need you toned and tight. No, I will ever call me. No, I will ever need me. for the beer mug set, the uh, ping pong table, and the 65 inch 4K Ultra HD TV with crystal clear pure pixelation. Oh, and if you could also throw in one of the mini fridges for the bedroom. Kind of gotten used to it. Is this for a wedding? No, it's for a divorce. So, I have a challenge. A challenge for me? Mm -hmm. Like fixing you hasn't been enough. You have to say yes or no before I hear any question. That seems a little unfair. Oh, it's completely unfair. The odds are totally in my favor. What's it gonna be? I'm too tired for this. Yes or no? Yes, fine. Okay. Now can you end my misery and tell me what horrible thing I just agreed to? A night on the town with me. Well, consider it a practice date before I find a real date. Assuming you can even find someone willing to hang out with you. I just did, didn't I? Look, I'm ready for something new. I mean, look at me. This is Susan's idea of what I should look like. <laughs> and for example, my hair? She made an appointment for me every fourth Saturday, and every fourth Saturday, I would go. I get it. You're a blank canvas. Exactly. Yeah. I need your help. Okay. I'll make some calls and put you in touch with the right people. Okay? Okay. I had no clue so many guys use low lights to offset the highlights so that the hair looks darker and thicker. I never even thought to do anything to my face. 
I didn't exfoliate. I didn't moisturize. I just showered, shaved, and maybe threw some chapstick on when my lips cracked. And when Susan and I shopped, we always bought clothes a little bigger, so if I put on a few pounds, they'd still fit. What the hell happened to you? Take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think of a name for your signature cocktail yet? I was thinking the Tyrannosaurus sex. <laughs> the he devil. <laughs> <laughs> um, the obituary. <laughs> You're such a cunning linguist. Ani ke liye shukriya. Ab ke liye karaoke classic hai. Taking it too far. I insist. <laughs> I resist. I persist. Nathaniel. Katerina. Come on. First date. I think the support group of divorcees would be proud. just so daring. So you don't like it? No. Nope. I love it. So what is it? Don't take this the wrong way. Okay. But uh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just surprised and shocked that uh, something so smart, uh, sophisticated, and unique actually came from you.
I'm sorry, did I do something? You guys are staring at me like I did something wrong. I mean, I know I, know I skipped a few sessions, but what, what's going on here? I don't know about the other guys, but me personally, coming in with new shoes, hip hair, like you're ready to conquer the world. Makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Wait, are you serious? I'm just supposed to come here when I feel down and struggling and feeling miserable? Maybe. What are you guys saying? We're thinking maybe you don't belong in this group anymore. We think maybe you need to leave. He did look pretty good, though. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. Um, just wanted to say thank you so much for coming to my little dress rehearsal. I want to make sure this goes off without a hitch. So without further ado, Nick. Excuse me, Nick, can you cue, cue the music, please? Nick? Oh, you want it right now? Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. What are you doing here? Um, do you mind if we just talk privately? If you have something to say, you can just say it in front of everyone. Okay. I'm also having a divorce party. I, uh, I miss you guys, and I just, I just wanted to extend the invite. I'd also really love to have you there. I mean that. I'm just gonna leave these here. mention those weird clothes. Your clothes are weird. No, they're not. Yes, they are. You said I looked nice. Well, I lied. Hey, Muffin. These are great. I really like the, uh, you can like, you can feel the letters. You know, it's, I got like the raised letters, like little goosebumps on the paper. Do you still want to play the song or? What is this? <laughs> Did I miss something? Listen, I don't know. I. This started as a business arrangement. I signed on to plan your party and that was it. And it didn't even cross my mind that I would actually start to soften or actually start to feel like I was missing who I used to be. But the closer I got to you, the more it reminded me of what Chuck and I used to be. And as much as it ended badly, that life was comforting and enticing. Of course, you're still gonna have memories and feelings for who you used to be. But that's my problem, Nate. That life is addictive. It's all consuming, and I... If I'm not careful, I end up standing behind double-pane windows holding a bun cake and commenting on how I really hope to get to Europe this summer. I understand. I understand what you're saying, but you can't just predetermine where two people are gonna end up in a relationship. 
Isn't it about the journey? <laughs> and then there will be one night when you come back home and you look at me and you say, I'm just not happy. And then where do we go? Good luck with the party. I'm not going to sugarcoat bad news. Everybody loved your design for the concert hall. But you came in second. Something about it being too inventive, too creative, and simply the best, most original idea they ever saw. Too creative? Uh, what can I say? That's why I do mini malls. Hi. Whoa, hey. Well, well, what are you doing here? Oh, I told the guy at the front desk I was your wife, and he was so excited. He showed me to the door and everything. Have you been working out? Just barging here while I'm naked? Well, what's the big deal? I've seen you naked thousands of times. Well, the big deal is that we're kind of working through some issues at the moment. I, I don't know if you've got the right to see my new body. You're right. And I have some things that I'd like to talk to you about, so can I buy you dinner? Why would I let you buy me dinner? I could apologize. I could make excuses. But the truth is, I miss you. I miss us. We had a language. We had a way of communicating that belongs to us. And I foolishly tried to recreate that with Nick. We didn't get each other. I wasn't in sync with him like I am with you. And I miss that. And I'm willing to bet that you miss it too. There's a lot I miss. Thank you. So what do you think? I don't know. What do you think? Well. I think we were together for five years. And it'd be crazy not to give it another shot. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. I just, uh, I was told I could find you here. <laughs> I know this is gonna sound really weird, but uh, I heard you help people with divorce parties. Who'd you hear that from? The former member of our group. Yeah, we, we thought he was emotionally unstable at the time. Now it seems like a pretty good idea. I'm sorry that that was just a one-time thing. Oh, 
That's, that's too bad. You said you're a real artist. Sorry to bother trying to figure out what the hell I was going to say to you. Can you give me, a, give me another minute? Do you want me to close the door and come back out again? No, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Moving out? What, does the motel down the street have better rates? No, I'm... I'm getting back together with Susan. You know, I, I gotta say, this is one of the things I really missed. Well, I gotta say, I miss doing it for us. So, I was thinking for the party, maybe I could invite some of my friends. Would they be uh, new friends or? Uh, Colin and, and Jake. You mean the Colin and Jake who brag about sleeping with coeds? You know, it's probably not their kind of party. I'm not sure they even have fun. Yeah, we should have them over in another time. But you know what? It's up to you. Only do it if it's what you really want. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh, I, uh, I am getting my hair done tomorrow, and I made you an appointment. They asked where you'd been, and I told them, traveling for work. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me it is not fucking true. Of course it's true. How can you tell? His shoulders are slumped, his head is sagging, and he's wearing that new cologne defeated by lame jack-off. Mm. What the hell are you guys talking about? Remember that guy's wife who's in my fantasy league who also takes yoga with Jan? Did I hear that she got invited to a barbecue you and Susan are throwing? Why weren't we invited to that barbecue? <laughs> okay, wait. Okay. I... Unbelievable. You got back together with her? So there's no divorce party. I, I wanted to take you guys out to lunch and explain everything properly. Explain? And... What is there to explain? I'm trying to work things out with Susan at the moment. It's really complicated. Look, man, divorce Susan. Stay with Susan. Honestly, we don't care. It's really not that complicated. Guys. I am so glad you called, because I left some things off the list this morning. I have decided to make potato salad instead of coleslaw, so can you please pick up a pound of red skin potatoes, a bunch of chives, and some mayonnaise? Yeah, actually, you know what? That's perfect, because I, I was thinking of inviting a friend of mine. Uh, oh, you are? Yeah, Chad. I, I met him through Colin and Jake. Um, you're going to love him. This barbecue isn't really the environment for guys who chase co -eds. <laughs> No, trust me, he's the last person to be chasing co around. Yeah, we could do eight, <laughs> of course. Um, is he bringing a, a wife or girlfriend? No, actually, he just broke up with his boyfriend, so it'll just be seven. You know, se seven's like just a, an odd number, and, and I don't want him to feel like a seventh wheel. Trust me, he's going to blend right in. Well, I don't want to tell you you can't invite him, so 
that's what you really want to do? I really do. Okay? Okay. Bye. I know what you mean. Nate and I have been trying to decide if we should get pregnant or we should take one last trip to Paris. Oh. Okay. Uh, Nate, how's work stuff going? Uh, you know, honestly, I've been thinking about leaving. Re Really? Yeah, I, uh, I actually entered this competition to design the new concert hall, and it sort of got me thinking about striking out on my own. Yeah, well, you know how risky it is to go out on your own. You know, I, I said to him, let's just make that a goal for the future when we don't have a mortgage to pay every month. <laughs> and not to mention the distance, you know? It's like, what happens if you get a job to do a building in some other city, like Omaha? Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> I hate Omaha. Yeah, well, if you never take a leap, then things never change. You know, there's plenty of room for an in-ground pool back here. Yes, I'm always saying that to these two, that it could increase the property value 20%. Easy. It would look so nice, too. Play the rhyme game. I, I played this in college and it was kind of lame. <laughs> I don't think our guests are interested in playing some unintelligible drinking game so they can get hammered. I'm drinking water. I want to play. I think I'm enamored. <laughs> Maybe it's time for a change of pace. Uh, uh, so we don't spend the whole night treading in the same place? <laughs> exactly. It, it, it doesn't hurt to try something new. Unless you're scared to face, uh, face yourself and, and, what, and what is true. <laughs> OK, play your stupid game, fine. Jane, can I have some more wine? Oh. <laughs> we can sit here and eat chips. All night. Feels like we're trying to force something that shouldn't be forced. Feels that way, doesn't it? Um, I think I need to be on my own for a while. Take it from me. It's not gonna be as bad as you think. <laughs> okay. Designing? Yeah. I need to. I mean, you believed in me, and I thank you for that, but I always wanted my own firm. I know it's going to be tight, but I feel like now's the time to take a shot. Well, funny enough, you're already reaping the rewards. What do you mean? The city called. All that imagination and creativity that was way too much for the concert hall is perfect for the new skate park they just commissioned. Why do you make it your very first official job for your new company? Are you serious? I... <laughs> hey, man. We just uh, wanted to congratulate you. Yeah, that design kicked ass. Thanks, guys. 
Well, whenever you're free, uh, I'm ready to go down some brewskis or tee some tail. <laughs> and of course, you're both still invited to the party. We wouldn't miss it. Yeah, I want to meet Katie. Yeah, well, unfortunately, she's the only one who has an RSVP. I'm going to tell you the story about how I recently met someone remarkable. That person was pretty invisible for a long time. You, you worry about nothing. That's what I find so crazy about you. There's no silver lining, no gray sky that could ever be blue. And with the help of someone special, this invisible person was finally able to emerge and find his voice. You don't trust the sun because it's always setting down. Here you go, put me down again. In the Ready for the first night of the rest of your life? Must feel good All right. Treat <laughs> yeah. me like you do. Well, let's get this party started. Yes, we're the human race, I suppose. Must feel good okay. to you. Treat me like you do. I forgot to RSVP. I thought you RSVP to everything. I guess I've changed. Shall we, Miss Franco? Certainly, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Here you go. Put me down again. In the way only you can, I suppose. It must feel good to you to treat me like you do. Put me in my place at the bottom of the human race. Feel good to you to treat me like you do. You worry all the time, you worry about everything I do. I trip and fall and you scream like it happened to you you worry all the time that's what i find so crazy about you there's no silver lining no gray sky that could ever be blue here you go let me down Must feel good to you to treat me like you do. Put me in my place at the bottom of the human race. I suppose it must feel good to you. Here you go. Put me down again in the way only you can. I suppose it must feel good to you to treat me like you do. Put me in my place at the bottom of the human race. I suppose it must feel good to you to treat me like you do.